In this video, we're going to review the term bisect, and we're going to look at bisecting segments and angles. So if you recall, the word bisect means to cut in half or divide something into two equal parts. So cut in half or divide into two congruent parts. So we talked about perpendicular bisectors. We looked at perpendicular bisectors on a graph. So remember, a perpendicular bisector must be, it's a line or segment array that's going to cut another segment into two equal parts, but it also has to be perpendicular. In this video, we're going to talk about just bisectors in general, not necessarily perpendicular. So the only time it's a perpendicular bisector is if it says it's a perpendicular bisector. Otherwise, it's just cutting the segment or angle into two equal parts. So the first thing we're going to look at is a segment bisector, which means you're cutting a segment into two equal segments. So cuts a segment into two congruent segments or two congruent parts. So meaning if I'm bisecting this segment here, we would have to find the middle of that segment and the bisector is just going to cut into that so that it creates two congruent parts. So the segment that's being bisected is the pink segment. The segment bisector is the blue segment because that's actually bisecting the pink segment. So the piece that's getting or the segment that's getting bisected is the one that has the two congruent parts. So this right here would actually be the midpoint because you're cutting through the middle. And keep in mind the actual segment bisector, it could be a segment. It could itself be, it could be being bisected itself, but not necessarily. It could be, um, you know, two unequal parts here. It could be a line that goes on forever. It could be part of a line. But the thing that's being bisected has to be a segment because you have to be able to find the middle of it. So let's look at this first example here. So it says AB is bisecting LN. So the key thing here to point out is bisects LN. That means LN is the segment that's being bisected or the segment that's being cut in half. So that means I'm going to start with that segment first. So LM, that's being bisected. So that means it's being cut through its midpoint. So it says it's being bisected at point M. So that means M is in the middle, which means these two parts have to be equal. The segment that's doing the bisecting, the segment bisector, is AB. So AB is somewhere so that it's intersecting through the middle of LN. So really AB isn't really gonna, um, how you draw that doesn't matter, it does not have to be perpendicular. It doesn't say it's a perpendicular bisector, so it's just a segment, it could be a line that's passing through the middle of segment LN. So now when I actually go to label my pieces here, they say LM is 2x plus 45 and MN is 5X plus 36. We want to solve for X and find the length of LN. So anytime you're trying to solve a problem for X, you have to figure out what's the geometric relationship between the different expressions. You can't just um, tell me the length of LN in terms of X, meaning you can't, it has to be all a number. So I have to find X so that I can plug into this so that then I can add up the different parts. So the first thing you have to do is decide what's the relationship between these two expressions. Well, the relationship between them is that they have to be equal to each other because segment LN is being bisected, M's the middle, so we have two congruent parts. So I'm going to write my conclusion here, my reasoning, and this is something that I want you to be doing as well. Anytime you're solving an algebraic problem, you should be explaining why. So the geometry behind this is the fact that we had a bisector which implies that we have two congruent parts. So this arrow here I read as implies. So it means we were given that we had a bisector. The conclusion I made from it is that we have two equal parts. So the two parts are equal. So now I can set them equal. So 2x plus 45 equals 5x plus 36. And then we just solve it. So subtract 2x from both sides. Subtract 36 from both sides. So we end up with 9 equals 3x. Divide by 3. So we get x equals 3. So there's the first part. The second part says find the length of ln. So if we want to know the length of ln, I have to know which 
what Lm equals, and I have to know what Mn equals so that I can add them together. So Lm is going to be 2 times 3 plus 45, so essentially I'm just plugging in the 3 into the expression. So that ends up giving me 51. I'm going to do the same thing for Mn. So it's going to be 5 times 3 plus 36. So that gives me 51. And then in order to find Ln, what you're going to do is you're going to add those up. Because if each part equals 51, we'll add them together. That's going to give you Ln. So 51 plus 51, and I get 102. So that's my answer. So same idea for angle bisectors. The difference is instead of cutting a segment into two congruent parts, well, an angle bisector, you're going to bisect an angle. So you're going to cut an angle into two congruent parts. So this is going to cut... So cuts an angle into two congruent parts. So if we look at example two, it says that we have FH is bisecting this angle. So that's the thing that's getting bisected, angle EFG. So let's go ahead and draw that angle. So E. F is the middle, so that's the vertex here, and then G. And then the ray that's bisecting it is FH, so that means I'm going to start at F, I'm going to extend it out, and then call this point H. So notice the arrow is pointing above the H. So I know that since I'm bisecting this angle, I know that this part and this part have to be congruent. Because remember, a bisector, any time that you're told you have something that's being bisected, you can say, if you're given a bisector, your conclusion you can make is that you have two congruent parts. So again, get used to writing that out because that's going to help us later on when we do proofs in geometry. You're going to have to be able to write these reasons out. So that's why we're starting it now so that it's easier later. So then I go ahead and label. So the measure of angle EFH, so EFH is 5x plus 4, and then HFG is 2X plus 37, and we want to find X, we want to find the number of degrees in all of the angles. So looking at the relationship between what you have, these are the parts, so the parts are equal. You're going to see in the check your understanding problems that instead of just giving you two parts, you might have a part and you might know the entire angle, so don't just set those equal. Anytime you have a part and you have the whole thing, well, two parts equals the whole. So think about that when you're doing those check your understanding problems. But for this one, we're given the two parts, and the two parts have to be equal because we bisected it. Same thing as what we did up top. We set those pieces equal because if you're bisecting, you get two congruent parts. We were given the two parts, so we set them equal. So in this case, I'm given the two parts, so those two parts have to be equal if we're bisecting. But the relationship between the part and the whole is the part is half of the whole thing, or two of the parts equals the whole thing. So either way you can think of it. But for this one, we're talking about the relation between the two parts, so we set them equal, and then we go ahead and we solve it. So I get 3x equals 33, divide by 3, we get x equals 11. So there's the first part. The next part is solving for all these angles. So it says find the measure of EFG, EFH, and HFG. So I'm going to start with these two because those are the two parts. So the measure of angle EFH. So EFH is going to be plugging in. So I don't know where he went. There we are. So we have... EFH, we plug in, so we have 5 times 11 plus 4, so 55 plus 4 gives me 59 degrees. Then we move on to the next one, HFG, so HFG is this part, so 2 times 11 plus 37, so 22 plus 37 gives me 59. Remember, those should be equal because those are the two parts. Then to find the entire angle, which is going to be measure of angle EFG, we're going to add those up. So 59 degrees plus 59 degrees, you get 118. So that's your final answer.
So remember when you're doing these problems, it's going to ask you for different things. Sometimes it might ask you just to find x, which means you find x and you're done. Sometimes it might not even say to find x. It might just say um, find the measure of angle EFG. So that just means you have to know that the first step is to solve for x so that you can plug in and then find the measure of angle EFG. You can't just tell me, um, you can't just add these expressions up and tell me in terms of x what the angle measure is. You actually have to solve for x and then plug in and get a number. So anytime it's asking for a measure of an angle or the length of a segment, you always need to get a number, which usually means solve for the variable first. So keep that in mind. And then keep in mind, if you're given two parts and it's being bisected, the parts are equal. If you're given a part and a whole, well, you need two parts to equal the whole if it's being bisected. So keep that in mind and go ahead and try those check your understanding problems.